Life is resilient. In fact, it's nearly indestructible. And yet, it is extremely fragile. Throughout Earth's history, life has been tested again and again in mass extinction events that on some occasions have pushed life to its very limits. Out of all the mass extinction events, the Permian Triassic is seen as one of the most devastating. Occurring 250 million years ago, this event is believed to have devastated an overall 60% of marine and terrestrial families combined. Marine life was hit the hardest, suffering heavy losses of approximately 90% of species, in comparison to terrestrial life, which lost an approximate 70%. While the causes are heavily debated, some suggest that increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide and the lack of oxygen in the shallow, stagnant sea surrounding the supercontinent Pangaea are responsible. These kill mechanisms can be tied to the volcanic eruption of the Siberian Traps, one of the most vast flood basalt provinces on Earth. As environmental conditions changed drastically, the world became extremely uninhabitable to the majority of animals. We must then ask, how did life survive? Let's take a look at the brachiopods, more specifically the Lingulidae brachiopods. These small but mighty creatures did what 90% of all marine species could not do. They survived. As one of the most noted conquerors, they thrived in the early Triassic post-extinction catastrophic environments, distributing themselves globally. Although the key to their success remains unclear, Many studies look at their ecological adaptations, their shell morphology, and their overall appearance. From the late Devonian period to the end of the Permian, brachiopods made many evolutionary changes which enabled them to withstand the anoxic, stressful environment that was occurring. Their shell size and thickness decreased, and their overall shape changed, becoming flatter and more pointed. Luckily for the Linguladae brachiopods, they had an organophosphatic shell, this gave them an edge over other marine life. When ocean acidification caused the dissolution of many sea creatures' shells, the Lingulidae brachiopods shell remained unaffected. 102 other brachiopod species are thought to have survived the Permian extinction, living in a range of environments, from the Himalayas in Asia to the Alps in Italy, demonstrating their willingness to not only survive, but thrive anywhere they can. When you think of mass extinctions, you probably think of the most famous one of all. 65 million years ago, an asteroid, 10 to 15 kilometers wide, slammed into the Gulf of Mexico. This impact would have triggered tsunamis and earthquakes of epic proportion, and ejected so much rock and debris into the atmosphere that it plunged the planet into darkness for years afterwards. In this unforgiving new world, being a large animal with an equally large need for food, was essentially a death sentence. An estimated 75% of existing species on Earth at the time would eventually become extinct. The dinosaurs, whose reign over the planet had lasted 160 million years, would be among the casualties. These conditions can only be described as hell on Earth. You would think that would be a miracle for anything to survive such an apocalyptic event. However, not only did life survive in the aftermath of the impact, but over time, it absolutely thrived. But these survivors had traits that allowed them to survive such an event. Firstly, they were small. Nothing larger than a cat survived the initial impact. These ancestors of modern mammals took shelter in burrows, shielding themselves from the worst of the elements above. They emerged into an entirely new world. They had to be resourceful. There was no room for specialism in the post-apocalyptic world. Most mammals were omnivorous, digging for shoots and insects in the soil. The surviving bird species, the descendants of the dinosaurs, were water-dwelling, diving for food and taking refuge in wetland areas. But as the world healed over the course of thousands of years, these foundling animals were able to branch out, with the mammals in particular diversifying into the new dominant group on the planet. So, the fall of dinosaurs was vital for the rise of mammals, a dynasty that lasted until today, and whose future has become ever more unsure. 
The Mammal Dynasty has lasted for the last 60 million years, but our future remains uncertain. How will we survive the next inevitable mass extinction event? Perhaps we should take inspiration from past mass extinction event survivors, like the Brachiopods, who survived the Permian-Triassic mass extinction event, which absolutely decimated life in the world. They somehow survived and thrived in uh, acidic and oxygen depleted waters and then went on to live globally in the Triassic period. So we could study them and from that figure out how we can survive in future environments. The next mass extinction event is inevitable and we have to know how to survive. To do this we need to study past survivors like the mammals 65 million years ago. We need to know how to improvise, adapt and overcome and to really understand that the world gives us so much, but just like that, it can take it all away.